I've been wanting to build some kind of computer-controlled woodworking thing for a long time. And about three, maybe four years ago, my friend Jonah built a big CNC machine. And this was a little bit inspirational for me, just to, to see that it could be done. And it still seemed daunting at that point. But over the course of a year or so, he convinced me that I could do it as well. So I want to put a, a huge shout out and a, a big thank you to my friend Jonah for, for pushing me to do this project, to, to take the risk, and also for his help in pretty much every step of the process. So last year in 2014, in August, I started building the frame for my CNC machine. And it really made sense to make the frame or the base for the machine out of metal so that it won't expand with the different seasons and it'll be it'll be lighter to move if it ever needs to get moved around and it would just it would just look nicer out of metal i started with the top as a frame trying to keep that as flat as possible and then i made legs to hold that frame up and then bracing to hold the legs in place and some very cheap non-skid adjustable feet <laughs> My thought with this was to make a four by eight table with then a four foot section at the end where the router could go, but it wouldn't have a table underneath so that I could put taller things there. If I wanted to do like the bottom of a bowl or the side of a piece of furniture once it's finished or the side of a log or just, just something bigger that wouldn't fit under the router on the table. And what I'd like to have is a vertical clamping surface on the end so that I can do the ends of pieces. Like if I wanted to do a leg to a piece of furniture and do the joinery on that or, or something like that. So the first thing to do was to get the steel for the base. The steel comes in 20 foot sections and it's hard to carry that in the truck without damaging it. So I had it delivered. And it's nice that it's in long lengths as I can cut it to whatever I need. I'd found that cutting steel with the Sawzall with a metal blade actually works really well, but the problem is keeping it accurate. So I built a miter box for the Sawzall. I needed to cut the pieces of steel to specific lengths, so I made a stop system with the miter box which is basically a two by four with a piece of plywood screwed to the end of it. But that let me cut the pieces of steel to very exact lengths. And the sawzall on the steel leaves a very nice cut and it doesn't get the steel very hot when compared with cutting it with a grinding wheel. I cut the pieces for the top frame. Now the two long side pieces were 12 feet, so I had to lengthen my jig, which stretched most of the way across the width of the shop. Then I could cut the two 12 foot pieces that I needed. The plan was to weld the parts together, and what I decided I wanted to do was to make a wood platform to have the pieces for the top frame sit on so they could they would sit nice and flat and make a single plane. So I built two side rails and then clamped those together and I could lay out the steel on those pieces. And check to see that the frame was square. And then more importantly, to see that the frame was flat. So I, I found various straight pieces of material that I had to, to check between the corners to see that I was making a single plane and not, not a warped plane. And it was pretty close. And what I could do to adjust it was just to put a shim under whichever corner needed to be raised a little bit. And from there, I could start welding. Now, I'm not a welder, and this really isn't a welding video, and it's not really the place to learn how to weld, because <laughs> I'm not very good at it. I started by putting the pieces together just at points, sort of spot welding, or tack welding the pieces together. 
So I could still adjust things as I needed to. It was sort of like creeping up on getting this welded together. <laughs> and the kids came out to watch. So I'd weld a little bit and then grind it off and look and weld and grind and weld. <laughs> it was a long, slow process. And when I got one, one side pretty much done, I could flip the piece over and lay it back down on the same platform. And it did seem to be flat. And then weld the other side, weld into the evening and light up the neighborhood. <laughs> Now with the top done, I could start working on the legs. So I cut the pieces for the legs. And what I did was to make a pair of legs, sort of as a U-shaped, with the brace running in between. I could get that nice and square. Then, once I had one set done, I could use that as a pattern for the other sets of legs. Now at the bottom of each leg, there's going to be a little metal plate with a bolt welded to it, which basically gives me some threads at the bottom of the leg. I made a little jig to hold the leg sections upside down so that I could weld the bottoms of each leg. I started by welding the corners and getting it lined up and in the right spot. And then from there, I could weld each side and then grind everything smooth and clean up the bottom. It's back to the frame and getting it ground and, and as flat as I can make it. Now I spent a bunch of time adjusting my little platform, make sure everything was flat. And then I really wasn't gonna be able to weld where it was. So I moved the whole setup over closer to the door. Once I put the legs on, I really wasn't gonna be able to move the whole piece in and out of the shop. So I decided to weld the legs on inside the shop, which isn't really the greatest idea. That being welding inside a wood shop. So I kept the, the sawdust all cleaned up and I kept a pail of water out in the shop. And when I, when I finished up any welds, I would sort of wait around for a while to make sure there wasn't any smoke wafting out of anywhere. And it all actually went just fine. I didn't have any trouble doing this. And I kept the two big doors in the shop open so that I would get some ventilation. And I played around with a filter on that camera to see if I could actually videotape the weld as it was happening, which actually worked okay. The weld's not the best in the world, but, but it works. Then it was putting on all the bracing for the legs. This part of the process was a lot of welding a little bit, grinding, looking at the weld, re-welding. I realized doing fairly thin tube with stick welding is hard. <laughs> or it takes more skill than I have. <laughs> but the frame seems to be holding together, so, so it works. It was frustrating in that I do a weld that would come out really nice, and then I do another weld exactly the same way and it would look terrible. <laughs> I couldn't figure out what it was I was doing and that sort of would happen over and over again. It got to a lot of rotating the whole frame around in the shop to make the joint that I was welding be horizontal. So I would sort of get at all of the joints on each side and then rotate it, and then get at all the joints on that side, and, and so on. Then to do the 45 degree bracing, I cut a 45 degree guide in my miter box. And a little piece came off, so I glued that back in. Then with that, I could cut a 45 degree angle into the steel, which would let me make triangles, which are very strong. <laughs> I had Calvin help me hold a piece of wood up against the frame so that I could clamp that in place, as it's hard to, to hold three objects with only two hands. <laughs> and then that let me weld that piece on. More and more welding, and a little more. I kept thinking, oh, I'm, I'm done, it's finished. And then I'd find something like, oh, oh yeah, I've got to do that, that little bit over there, or that, that weld looks terrible, I need to finish that. 
So once the welding was done, I could start painting. And as it was upside down, I painted the bottoms of the legs, as those would be hard to get to when it's flipped around right side up. Now the other big project that needed to happen before the CNC could go into place was I needed to clear out a spot in the shop for it to go. So my metalworking area kind of moved out and into the house. We've got a room in the basement of the house, which right now is just more storage than really set up. I could move a bunch of the things that were in the way and not really used very much out. And then I could move the drill presses out of the way. And the gang of tools that was sort of between the, the rest of the shop and the metalworking area all had to shift a couple of feet to the north. And I moved my little power strip wall as well. But with all of this, this gave me a nice open space at the south end of the shop. And I could slide the frame into position. And one last tip. <laughs> It's to the point where it's just about as much weight as I can tip over and then safely and slowly bring down to the ground. But it's still much lighter than if it had been made out of wood. Now for the feet, the trick is to clamp a hockey puck with a bolt that then threads into the bottom of the legs. So I drill out a biggish shallow hole for the head of the bolt, then a hole all the way through. And then that gets clamped together with the bolt. And you just screw that assembly into the bottom of the leg. And if it needs to be a little taller, you can unscrew it a little bit and bring it down to the ground and get all of the feet holding up the frame equally. Then I ground a little bit more as when I, when I moved it and kind of flipped it around, I could see a bunch of other joints that hadn't been ground yet. And then to finish up the painting. And the base frame is done. And then comes the hard but fun part of building a machine. <laughs> Thanks for watching.